you've seen libor before but let's talk about it again because this is going to be the basis for most interest rate based forward contracts libor is the london interbank offer rate this is the representative rate for high quality non government borrowers so when large uh, high quality banks borrow from each other in the in the dollar market outside the us most of this is happening in london the rates that bank charge each other is called libor and since this is a in the in the private market it's not as impacted by government actions and hence this rate is extremely popular now in most interest based derivative contracts another subtle point when we talked about t bills in the earlier slide and when you saw t bills in obviously fixed income securities as well as in quant notice that t bills are quoted based on a discount rate or sometimes you heard the bank discount yield why is this called a bank discount yield because if we say the bank discount yield is 2% for a t bill then that 2% is a discount based on par value so a bond that's trading at a 2% discount if if we just take this as a annual bond 2% discount means that the bond is currently at 98 which is a 2% discount from 100 but when we talk so that's why this is called a discount basis yield but libor is a add on rate this is what this is much simpler this is what you would typically expect a uh, interest rate to be and to see this in a very simple example and to see how we work with libor let's say 30 day libor is 5% and another quick revision here this 30 day libor of 5 uh, 5% this 30 day libor is also the 30 day spot rate because there are no cash flows that are taking place in this 30 day period so let's say that 30 day libor is 5% what is the interest paid on a 30 day 10 million dollar loan so essentially let's say you are borrowing 10 million dollars for 30 days and you are paying the 30 day libor rate the way this works is the notional principal is 10 million into 5% so that's 5 over 100 multiplied by with libor we typically use a 360 day convention so we then say 30 divided by 360 so if you do the maths this is equal to the interest that you will pay now notice that the interest that you've calculated which is 5% which is because 5% is the annualized interest rate but then 30 over 360 because the period is only 30 days out of 360 days so you do this calculation and the amount that you calculate the interest amount is added on or is a add on relative to the amount that you are borrowing so you calculate this and that is the interest paid so now let's talk about forward rate agreements so these are essentially contracts that involve interest rates and forward rates we have already studied in fixed income securities as a quick refresher when we talked about forward rates these are the rates the interest rates in the future a long position when we talk about forward rate agreements is an obligation to take a hypothetical loan at a certain contract rate now if you are a industrialist and you know that after 90 days you will need to borrow let's say 10 million dollars so rather than take the risk of interest rates going up in the next 90 days what you can say right now is let's say that you will need to borrow this money for 60 days so here is time 0 here is uh, time uh, let's say 90 when you need to start your loan and you want to take a loan out for 60 days so this then becomes 150 so 
at time zero if you sign a contract with the dealer again let's say the dealer is a large financial institution so at time zero you sign a contract which says that the interest rate is going to be equal to five percent so you sign a contract with the dealer that you are going to borrow 10 million dollars at five percent on this day and obviously in that you also need to specify that this is a 60 day loan so this is an example of a forward contract where at time zero you are getting into a contract to borrow a certain sum of money which is 10 million for a certain period of time which is 60 days at a certain rate which is five percent so that's your long position now what happens if interest rates go up if interest rates go up to say say the actual interest rate here is six percent now you as the long party benefit why because the underlying has gone up the underlying here is a uh, interest rate you had a contract to borrow at five percent the actual rate is six percent so even though the actual rate at this day is 60 percent you can still borrow your 10 million at five percent and that's good for you because if you hadn't gotten into this contract then you would have to pay six percent to borrow so as you have so a consistent theme with forward contracts is the underlying has gone up so the long party has benefited now let's also look at the short position in the same example the short position is say the bank so the short position is the is so so this so this is the bank so the bank is committing to make the loan and it's a hypothetical loan i will i will explain what this means in a little bit so so the bank is now committing to make the loan at 5% but if the actual interest rate is 6% that means the bank has to lend you money at 5% even though the going rate is 6% so that clearly is not good for the bank and the bank loses so that's a long position that's our short position a quick word on fra terminology the way you might see fra is described is as follows so in this example that i have just shown over here you typically write uh, an fra as uh, something by something how do you come up with these some things the first number that is specified over here is when will the loan start so given time zero the loan is starting at day 90 so this could be written as 90 a 90 by the second number is the is when does the loan end starting from today so given today in this example above the loan ends on day 150 so this can be written as a 90 by 150 FRA, which means that we at time zero, we are getting into a contract to borrow on day 90 and the money will be returned on day 150. A lot of people make a mistake where they put 60 over here, which would be the duration of the loan. And while that seems logical, but the convention is that both the numbers 90 and 150 are based on the number of days from from day zero sometimes this is expressed in terms of days this could also be expressed in terms of months so the same thing could also be written as three so which means the loan will begin three months from today three by and the loan is ending five months from day zero so this could also be written as a 3 by 5 FRA. So make sure you pause here for a minute and understand this terminology because you need to know this. Now through an example let's figure out how we determine who pays whom how much. So we are talking about uh, FRA where the term is 30 days. When we say the term is 30 days what we mean is the following we mean that if today is day zero then the fra begins on day 30 and fra must also specify a notional amount so let's say that the notional amount is 1 million and since i'm talking about libor actually 
I should be talking in terms of dollars. So the notional amount is $1 million. The underlying rate is 90 day LIBOR. Since this is a 90 day LIBOR, that means that the borrowing period is 90 days. So this should be 90 days, which means that in terms of the timeline from day zero, the loan ends on day 120. Okay, if this were in terms of months, then we could have written this as zero and then one month and then month four. So in terms of months, how would this FRA be written? It would be written as a one by four. So the loan is beginning one month or 30 days from today and the loan has to be repaid on day 120, which is four months from today. And again, the important point is that the FRA, the FRA contract ends over here. So because on this day, we know the interest rate and the way FRAs work is we actually settle, do a cash settlement on this date. So with FRAs, the loan doesn't actually happen. We just figure out who pays, who owes whom, how much we make that payment and end the chapter. And that's why that's why the underlying loan is referred to as a hypothetical loan. So in my example, the underlying rate is 90 day LIBOR or the underlying loan is 90 day LIBOR. That means that the loan is for 90 days. The forward rate is 5%. So we are agreeing on a forward rate of 5%. That means that on day zero, we are agreeing that the long will borrow money remember borrowing money is essentially like buying money the price of money is the interest rate so the long is willing to or is not willing to but is obligated contractually obligated to pay a rate of five percent on this notional principle and similarly the counterparty is obligated to lend which is like selling money at a rate of five percent no matter what the interest rate is so, so now that's the agreed amount, uh, that's the forward rate. Let's say now on day 30, the actual LIBOR is 6%. So the actual is 6%. So on this day, the actual is 6%. Now who owes whom how much? Without doing any calculation, you should immediately see that this is good for the long party. Why? Because the long party had a contract that said that he could borrow at 5%, interest rate is actually now 6%. If he hadn't gotten into this contract, then he would have to borrow at 6%, but now he is borrowing at 1% less, which is 5%. Now, how do we figure out? So clearly, this means that the short needs to pay some money to the long. The question now is how much money? So let's calculate that and all this ties in now with basic time value of money calculations. So on day 30, let's look at how much money would, uh, what is the interest that the long would have to pay if he had not gotten into this contract. So if he hadn't gotten into this contract, then the rate that, then the amount of money that the long would have to pay can be calculated as follows. So it would be 6%, which is 6 over 100, multiplied by the notional principle, actually 6 over 100, but then this is for a 90 day period. So let's just simplify this. This is 6% for a year. For a 90 day period, this becomes into 90 over 360 multiplied by the notional principle of 1 million. So this is how much the long would have to pay if the interest rate, if, if he hadn't gotten into the forward contract. Now, given that he has the forward contract, how much does he actually need to pay given that he has this forward contract? So that amount is 5 over 100 which is so 5% interest rate again for a 90 day period, which is 90 over 360 into 1 million. So this is how much he actually pays. So what is the benefit to the long? 
the be the net benefit to the long is this number minus this number so we need to calculate that amount so let's say that that amount is 2500 so since interest payments are made typically at the end of the period essentially given that the actual rate here is 6% we are saying that at the end of the 90 day period the short has to give the long 2500 but we want to settle this forward contract on day 30 so I'll just draw this again over here so now we are on day 30 and so after 90 days the short has to give the long 2500 so remember we are now on this day 30 and after 90 days the short has to give the long 2500 but the short and the long don't want to wait for 90 days they know that the current interest rate is 6% so why not simply discount this 2500 back to day 30 which is now the present and figure out how much money the short has to pay the long and then close out the deal so the way you can do this is simply find the present value of 2500 over here which would simply be 2500 divided by so the present value is simply 2500 over 1 plus and this number simply represents the interest rate for the 90 day period this is the convention used in uh, this is the convention used in FRAs a more precise way of doing this could have been 2500 divided by 1.06 to the power of 90 over 360 which is 0 0.25 both these will give you practically the same answer but in most books you will see things done this way all we really have done is taken the 2500 and figured out the present value notice that the present value is calculated based on the actual interest rate and not the contract rate so now that you understand the concept of a uh, forward rate agreement i just want to share a formula that confuses most students but since you've uh, understood the material i want to highlight that the formula is not as bad as it looks uh, the 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 formula is for figuring out how much the amount is and i'm just going to do it in the context of the example that we just did so in our example we said time zero the fra was uh, ex expired on day 30 and this was for a 90 day uh, this was for a 90 day libor so we went up to day 120 and this was for a notional principle of 1 million so to figure out what is the settlement amount so I'll just call that the the settlement amount over here the formula that you will see is as follows notional principle into the floating rate minus the forward rate so the floating rate minus the forward rate into days over 360 the whole thing divided by 1 plus the floating rate into days over 360 and I just want to highlight that this is exactly what we just did so notice how did we calculate our numbers we said a notional a notional principle was 1 million the floating rate is the if this this FRA was actually based on LIBOR the floating rate means the actual floating rate on day 30 so in our example that was 6% minus the forward rate the forward rate in our example was 5% that was the amount in the contract that we had agreed upon at day 0 and then days over 360 so essentially 1 million into 6% minus 5% so this essentially is the 1% number so this is the net benefit to the long in in my example 
the net benefit to the long but then this is these are annualized numbers so we need to bring this down to a 90 day period so that's why we multiplied this by 90 over 360 so this number in the numerator gives us the amount on day 120 that the short has to pay the long now we want to actually settle over here at day 30 so the amount that we just calculated for the numerator was 2500 we then need to take the 2500 and discount it back to day 30 and to discount back to day 30 we divide by 1 plus the floating rate which was 0 0.06 or 6 percent into days over 360 which is 90 over 360 so when we divide by this number essentially we are taking the interest amount that the short has to pay the long on day 120 we are discounting that back to this point so the complicated looking formula is effectively what we just did on the previous slide now let's talk about forward uh, about currency forward contracts so currency forward contracts are commitments to buy or sell a certain amount of foreign currency for a fixed amount of another currency in the future and these contracts are extremely popular so let's make sure we understand how they work now imagine that you are a large business in pakistan and you need you know that you will need so you are sitting here on day zero and on day 90 you will need 10 million dollars so here on day zero you know you will need this amount and let's say you are in a as in you are in the business of uh, importing uh, medical equipment so you know that you will need to make a payment in terms of dollars and what you don't want to worry about is the exchange rate on this day so you can go to a dealer and get into a contract to basically buy dollars for rupees say 90 per dollar so on day zero you are agreeing with the counterparty that you will buy one dollar for 90 rupees and the notional principle is 10 million so essentially you are saying you are going to buy 10 million dollars at rupees 90 per dollar so you have hedged your risk by essentially fixing the rates that you will pay so on day 90 if the dollar is more expensive so on day 90 if the dollar is worth rupees 91 you have hedged your risk because you will still pay 90 rupees per dollar even though the going exchange rate on this date is more so you as so in this in this case you have taken the long position and notice that as always the long position benefits when the underlying goes up what's the underlying here the underlying is a dollar so you have taken a long position in a dollar why because you have agreed to buy dollars so you are long the dollar when we talk about currencies the confusing thing is that if you are long one currency that means you are also short the other currency because buying dollars means that you are selling rupees but let's just keep things simple here we are saying that that you since you will need 10 million dollars you are buying dollars so you are long the dollar if the dollar strengthens as it does over here because 90 days later we see that the actual price of the dollar is 91 you as the long party benefited and obviously if you benefited as a long then all forward contracts are zero sum game that means that if you as the long party benefited then the counterparty was short the dollar they obviously lost out because they have to give you one dollar for 90 rupees even though in the market they could get one dollar for 91 rupees so that's your currency forward contract to highlight the point with this currency forward contracts i am actually going to do a example from the curriculum 
so I am going to do I think I am going to do question 3 which I believe is a real good illustration of currency forward contracts now the way this question goes we are talking about the end user which is Sun Microsystems so Sun Microsystems on day 0 they know that 90 days later they are going to get Euro 20 million so Sun let's say the European operation has committed to send 20 million dollars to Sun in the US now obviously Sun being an American company is more concerned about dollars so all the reporting is now done in dollars so what Sun then does is it goes to its uh, financial institution it, it uh, goes to its um, to its to the dealer and the currency dealer says that they are willing to sell euros at dollars 0 0.875 so what so this is the quote this is the quote on the forward contract so this is the forward contract on the currency where the dealer is saying that okay for every dollar that you give me i'm sorry for every euro that you give me the dealer will give sun this many dollars so let's just make sure we understand the underlying here now is the euro and what sun is doing sun is selling euro and the dealer will buy the euro so the underlying is the euro with sun selling so sun is taking a short position and the dealer is buying euros so dealer is taking a long position now roll forward 90 days and 90 days later the actual exchange rate is dollar 0 0.900 per euro so not explicitly stated here but these are numbers on a per euro basis so what has happened here the euro has actually appreciated or strengthened why do we say that because in the forward contract we are saying that each euro is worth 0.875 dollars but what actually happens 90 days later is that each euro is worth 0.9 dollars so the euro has strengthened or it's become more expensive or we can say that it has appreciated so when the underlying strengthens who benefits as you should be very familiar by now the long benefit so who's the long the long in this case is the dealer so the dealer benefits this means that if this is a cash settlement which uh, actually the question the, the problem in the curriculum says that this is cash settlement then obviously the son needs to pay the dealer a certain amount of money so the question then is how much money so let's look let's do this calculation in terms of dollars so based on the currency forward contract where we said that sun is going to sell 20 million dollars at dollars i'm sorry sun is going to sell 20 million euros at dollars 0.875 per euro so according to this contract we can easily calculate that the amount of dollars that sun is going to get is 17.5 million so based on this forward contract sun has locked in the fact that it's going to get 17.5 million dollars but had sun not made this contract then what would the 20 million euros have been worth then based on the actual exchange rate the 20 million euros would have been worth 18 point zero million dollars so that's what it would have been actually worth and effectively now since this is a cash settlement and the long party which is the dealer has benefited that means that sun needs to make a payment of 0 0.5 million so this amount of money will have to go from sun microsystems to the dealer so make sure you spend a little bit of time on this uh, because uh, this is extremely important the numbers are very straightforward but just getting your arms around the short and the long and uh, currency appreciation takes a little bit of time 
so make sure you spend the time and understand this well so that is it uh, unfortunately the curriculum does not have too many questions so uh, try to get practice questions from your study notes uh, the curriculum only has three questions so make sure you understand those three questions very well of those three questions I've already done one which is the one on currencies so make sure you do the other two and do the questions in your um, study notes and that should uh, that should put you in good shape as always please post your comments on YouTube and if you like this video then click on the like button